uh, my, my goal here is to leave you with some inspiration so that you leave here with one commitment to yourself or to someone that you care about to take another step into your journey of simplicity. And I was going to have my partner up here with me, but he's like, nah, you'll be fine. <laughs> Look at your own, so I might tap on you. <laughs> That's my husband. And um, let's get started. All I ask is that you be present and you be receptive and be curious. And perhaps you will take something away that um, you know will be will be good for you. All right, let me see. Okay, so um, I did work a lot of interaction into this because Joel nudged me to make sure I do that, and, and I like it that way. So we're going to have a very interactive workshop. So I want to start by asking you to define simplicity in one word. Earlier, was it uh, Dan Hayes in his video who told us? You are unique, and simplicity has a unique definition for you. It may mean something different for me than it may mean for you or for someone else. And so think of one word, maybe an adjective, that comes to mind when you think simplicity. And uh, write it down, and maybe share it, if you want to just fill it out. What comes to mind? Efficient. Efficient, excellent. Peaceful. Peaceful, I love that. Easy. Easy. Content. Content. I'll come back to easy. Who said easy? Easy. Okay. I'll free. come back to that. Free. I said free. Love that. Free. <coughs> what was that? Free. 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 Okay. I love that. Okay. Focus. Focus. Good one. So here are some words that resonate with me. Enough. Happy. Freeing. Effortless. Essential. Natural. I feel that simplicity is our natural mode of operation once we get out of the habits that we have built and we actually exist in it. Uh, painless, uh, uncomplicated, light, <coughs> and better. Some of these may speak to you, some of them may speak more than others, but the point is I think it's important to define simplicity for yourself. And earlier someone else said we are here to Think for ourselves, not to think like others do in the workshop today and tomorrow. So whatever you take away, that's what matters. It's important to you. It matters to you. So these are some words that uh, resonate with me. Now, moving forward. Somebody said simple, simplicity is easy. And I will argue with that <laughs> because I have found it to be actually very difficult. Even though it is what I believe is our natural mode of existence, I feel that living in this modern, Western, wonderful world that we have the opportunity to live in, it is going against the flow. So the natural flow is to have more, to, to compete, to, to be more like others. I mean, uh, if you look at uh, the me news and media, the people who are very popular are the celebrities who have so much. And so whether you you, you think you're influenced by that or not, that's what we use as our, as our uh, uh, role models, if you will. And so I feel that, ironically, simplicity is not simple. It takes intention. It takes a decision to say, I am going to incorporate simplicity into my life. I will make it a decision. I will make it a priority. It is important to me to have simplicity. So I, 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 I hope it would be simple, but it has been more of a um, challenging journey. But once you get through the initial challenge and the initial reaction from your friends and family, what do you mean you're selling your other car? You need two cars to live in suburbia. And we did it, it turns out. So once you get over that, you realize that, yeah, you can make it a, a part of your life, but it takes an intention. So. Don't be surprised if it's not as simple as you may think, but it's definitely worth it. Right. I love this from Mark Twain, and this applies to writing. So the writers among you know that it is very challenging to be succinct. He wrote this in a letter to a friend of his. If I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. 
And when you apply simplicity to your life, I think it's much easier than the writing, making writing succinct. I think that is very challenging. But it's similar. Getting rid of stuff is actually uh, harder than having more stuff. And that's part of the irony. So as you are going through the journey, be thinking about uh, be thinking about why you are accumulating everything that you have and, and what does it really take to be more with less. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my own journey. Joel said that it was accidental and earlier I shared with you that um, I love the stuff I have accumulated. I'm proud of them. I love my Persian rugs my china, my clothes, my shoes, I, I love them, I have an attachment to them, and they make me happy. So um, my family and I uh, immigrated from Iran with a couple of suitcases to go to Turkey for a two-week vacation, which turned to be a three-year residency <laughs> in Turkey, we never went back home, and then we immigrated to America. And so having more was a sign of success. And I'm really proud of what I've accumulated. And so the interesting thing is the transformation. At the beginning, my relationship with accumulation was I loved it for a number of years. I loved buying more, buying more expensive and higher quality things. And then I hit a point of, um, have you heard of diminishing returns? Mm -hmm. Where uh, the pleasure is not as much as it used to be. So you become a little indifferent. But the habit is so integrated that you do things out of habit. So even though I didn't enjoy the shopping as much, I still went because it was my habit. It is what I did on Saturdays. Or I would log into Amazon and I would buy because that's what I did. But the pleasure wasn't there. So that was the period of meh. I wasn't very happy with my habit. And at some point, I hit a tipping point where I wanted to make a change. It didn't make sense to do something that didn't give me pleasure. So that's a point of awareness. And um, you may have already hit that point where you feel, you know, this, this is stupid. This doesn't make sense. Um, I am not getting any pleasure out of this. And I keep spending my money or my time or my energy doing things that are not fulfilling. And so that is where I made a decision, and I changed the way I was behaving. I changed my habits. I changed my uh, accumulation habits. And so I am not so proud to say that I was an accumulation queen, but now I am more into giving things away. Because the things that you have may be useful to someone else. So you can donate. You can donate your books to the library. You can donate to different foundations, different groups. But um, it doesn't mean it doesn't, it's not good in and of itself. It just means it may not be serving you a purpose anymore. And so that's actually quite exciting. And we talked a lot about generosity. We talked about Joshua. Talked to us about generosity and how exciting it can be to give things away and to share. So um, it's, it's absolutely true. true. And, um, and I feel that has been the journey for me. So in your own journey, you may be at the very beginning, or you may be in the middle, or there may be other phases for you. And I think it's important to have some awareness. Like how do you feel about accumulation? Are you in conflict? Are you completely done? Are you at a point where you need to make a change? And uh, it's important to understand that before you make those drastic changes. Because if you're ready to go move into that 800 square feet home, and your spouse isn't quite there, the, that may cause other problems down the road. So it's important to know where you are emotionally and psychologically. Please feel free to ask questions and comments. Right. So here are some things that we have done to incorporate more simplicity into our lives. And uh, this was a big step for me and Andy. We um, sold one of our cars, and we went down to one of our family living in suburbia. Now, our situation is such that we are both entrepreneurs and we work from home. But we still have different schedules, we have different likes, we take different trips. And so it is surprising how well this has worked out. It's, we have had maybe one conflict in eight, nine months. And it wasn't even a conflict. 
And, um, and it's something that we would have never thought about. Uh, and it's funny because my battery kept dying because I wasn't using my car as much. And that was a sign. <laughs> that was a sign that said, look, maybe you're not using this wonderful car and you could sell it. And it was just a decision. Once we made that decision and we decided this is what we're going to do. So it takes the partnership of you and your living partner, if you have one, as well as the decision that this is what we're going to do and now we have to, uh, to exist in this new setting one car family. And uh, sometimes it's an easy adjustment. It was surprisingly easy for us, uh, but sometimes it can be more of an adjustment. So that has been very interesting. So that's living with simpler transportation. Um, another one is simpler, healthy living, eating, sorry. And we define that differently. And simpler, I will again bring up not easier. So in my case, I love juices and smoothies and whole foods but it's probably easier to go out and get fast food, and faster. But that's not necessarily simpler for my body to digest, simpler for, for my energy levels. And so it's important not to confuse, I think, simple and easy. So this one is more worthwhile, but it's easier as far as um, you know, the, the, the effects on your body. So for me, that's how I define healthy eating and the simplicity that that brings, and that may be different for you. But um, that's another way to simplify your life. Simpler reading or consumption of information. Uh, I used to have a great attachment to my books. And it used to be that you know once, it, once I had the physical book and I owned it, it wasn't enough to loan it from the library, then I felt that I could check it off the box and say I've read it. And that was, um, that was an interesting detachment that I had to create for myself. And I'm a voracious reader. I love to read tons and tons of books. So we had to create a different system. And it's simple enough to say, you know, just reading the Kindle. But for me, it was actually difficult. So we made an effort to go through all the books in the home, at the house, and for the ones that weren't terribly, terribly sentimental, to give them away, and then not to buy any more physical books. So now, when I get books from my author friends, I give them away, I, I send them to clients, I don't keep them because I want to make sure I read them and then I give them away and I don't buy physical books anymore. And I can enjoy that time, the energy that I have to read. So for me, going digital has worked and um, it's something that has simplified and created more space but, not, but by not keeping the books at the house. But the habit continues. So I still read but it doesn't have to be in the old mode of reading. Social life, and this one is more about time. Someone said earlier, it's important for them to create more time. Uh, that's very important because my goals are very clear and so your time is very limited. Money, it can come in abundance. Money is not limited. Your time and your energy are your limited resources. Those are the things you need to guard. So social life can take up a lot of time and energy. And if you are not careful, you can lose precious time. And again, that can be the force of habit. If Friday nights you feel you have to go out and relax and you know go anywhere, and whoever calls you go to dinner with them or whatever, then you may lose precious time. And so becoming more intentional about, with my social life was important to me. So I made time for family and close friends, and that's a very personal choice for you that may mean you make time for other certain people in your life, or with your pets, or whatever it may be. But I think it's important to have some simplicity there so that you can, um, you can um, do the things that matter to you. You can work on the things that are important. I think we don't realize how much time we spend socializing sometimes. Um, maybe that's because I'm an extrovert, I don't know, but it's been natural, like spending time on the phone. Like my mom spends an hour a day or so talking to her sister, like almost every day. I don't understand it, right? <laughs> and, it, 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 to, and she calls me and she expects me to talk to her and it's exhausting for me. And so we had to go through that whole process that says, look, I love you, but I cannot talk on the phone every evening. This was a few years ago. And you know, it's, it's hard to put those boundaries in place because people may confuse it with you not loving them and not caring about them. And that's where we need to be gentle, but firm. 
And that's where simplicity is not easy, but it's important to you. It takes an intention to integrate it into your life without alienating the people that are important to you. So this one is a, is a sensitive one. Uh, go carefully where that might be. Simpler travel. Uh, this has been an inspiration from my husband. I love to take a lot of stuff with me and buy a lot of stuff wherever I'm going and bring it back home. And in fact, for a number of years uh, when we would be traveling, my mom and my aunt would measure the fact that I have been to a country by the souvenir that I bought back from the country. And if I didn't, it's like I didn't go there. I'm like, what, what did you bring back from Africa? Well, you know, we went on a safari, pictures. And it didn't count in her mind. And I used to, I used to have the same belief. I, I adopted the same belief from her. And so on our trips, I would have us spend precious time souvenir shopping on the last day to force us to buy something to take home and to put on the shelf. Again, stupid, right? <laughs> so that had to stop. <laughs> right? I mean, you, you have to admit. So now, I'm, I'm perfectly happy when she asks, but I bring back memories. And for me, that's enough. And the country is always there if I wish to go back and buy something. But, um, <laughs> well, it is. Um, and also life hacking. I talked to the wonderful Canadian couple here, there they are, about never checking in luggage. And that is a, that is a mantra we go by 99% of the time. And it's so much, it's, it's so liberating. And it's so hard at the beginning when you are detaching from the things that you tell yourself you do not need for the next one, two to three weeks. And if you do, the destination probably has them. They have stores, they have pharmacies, they have grocery stores. But you don't think that way. So this whole journey, more than anything, has been a, a shift in, in my belief system, a, a good shift. And so I, I think if you are open to new beliefs and to also inquiring about your current beliefs, you will find simplicity to be Pretty fascinating. So only take your essentials. Simpler dressing. Uh, I used to love quantity in my closet. I still have a little bit of that. But it's much better. <laughs> and, and so I would buy things that are not necessarily high quality, but it would be you know, 10 skirts and 20 pair of pants, pairs of pants. And I have moved more toward more practical, high quality, but lesser in quantity. And, and also finding who I am because that's a lot of the, the, the um, dressing has to do with comparison and keeping up. And once you feel comfortable in your own skin and how you like to, to be, and, and, and this is easier, I think, here in American culture. I come from an Iranian culture where how you look matters more than anything else. So that has been a bigger adjustment for me. I think this one is going to be easy for all of you. Right, and then similar lifestyle. So in my case, I had a corporate job, and I was was a very, very ambitious corporate employee. If you met me five years ago, maybe longer, seven years ago, you wouldn't really recognize me. I used to be a different person. And then I realized that this rat race was actually making me unhappy and getting in the way of true happiness for me. So in a way, it, and it was complicated life complicating my life. I was stressed, my health was declining, my relationship was unhealthy, <coughs> and so the way I simplified my lifestyle is I quit my job. Um, I gave up a wonderful six-figure income that I've never missed, and um, I became my own boss. And it has been the hardest thing, because I worked the hardest, so again, going back to easy versus simple, but it's been the most fulfilling, best decision. So looking at the decisions that you're making, one question to ask yourself is, is, is what I'm doing stressing me, complicating my life? And if the answer is yes, then it's probably not something that's promoting simplicity. But it may take a lot of work and effort to make those changes, and that's okay. So those are some examples of how you could simplify your life. Now, we're going to do the first exercise. So if you would, I would like you to come up with one idea. One idea, I'm sure you have tons of them, but one idea that would add more simplicity to your life. 
This can be as simple as selling the table that's sitting over there in the corner and not doing anything, to changing your transportation, uh, the way you use transportation, to eliminating a relationship that's not serving you in your life. But come up with one idea and write it down. I'll give you a minute. Or you can think about it. Just have it in your mind. Okay. All right, so here is what we're going to do next. I have some questions for your idea. We're going to see if your idea passes some filters. Okay. The first filter is, does your idea create space? So let's say it's um, getting rid of that table, right? That could create physical space. But more importantly, there is mental space. And I define mental space as, uh, for example, when I quit my job, that was a lot of mental space clearing. It was less stress, less worry, less anxiety. That was all up here. And there was nothing physically changing. Well, I didn't go to work. But um, there's mental space, there is emotional space. When you um, eliminate a toxic relationship, you, uh, you create more emotional peace, so that's another kind of space. So um, does your idea create space in your life? The second question is, does it make you a little happier? So what's the point if it doesn't, right? In the end, in its essence, you want to be happy. It's annoying you, or a relationship that's irritating you, does it make you a little happier? Does it promote inner peace? Okay. I think simplicity in its, at its core gives us that peace. And, and, and peace is where it's, it's our natural state of being, but we have to be intentional about that too. So sometimes small things give you peace and joy. If something is really getting on your nerves, it could be as simple as how things are set up in your kitchen. Uh, maybe changing the way they are creates more peace. Or, again, the relationship, the job, the, the other factors. So does your idea promote more inner peace in your life? Uh, does your idea inspire you to creativity? Somebody else mentioned creativity earlier. In order to have simplicity in your life, you have to have some level of creativity. Because there is no manual for it. Joshua and Joel may write one, one of these days. But there is no manual. There is no step-by-step -step process that says, OK, you are a couple in your 30s with your children, so this is how you integrate simplicity. You are in your 60s and planning for your golden years. This is how you integrate simplicity. There isn't. So you have to be creative because it's unique for you. It's not the same. So this idea of creating uh, your idea, it needs to help you be more creative. And another question is, does it help you focus on what matters to you, right? And how do you define what matters to you? That's, uh, that's uh, aligned to your values. What's important to you? What are your guiding principles in life? If independence is important to you, then maybe sharing a car with someone else is not going to work out for you. If um, uh, freedom is important to you, maybe going to a corporate job doesn't work out. That was my case. But if security, as Charlie told us, is more important in that example, perhaps having a job is something you need to think about. So think about your values and then the idea you came up with. And does your idea help you focus more on what's important to you and what matters to you? If I got four out of five, is that good enough? <laughs> it could be better. Which one did you miss? Number two, make you a little happier. It will make other people happier, but it will not make me happier. Then why are you doing it? Well, that's why I was wondering if four out of five is good enough. Because maybe I'll pick a different idea. That's an important one. I think if it makes you less happier, 
you should ask yourself, you know, is, is this really the, the best idea to pursue in all the ideas that could help me with simplicity? Yes? Would their happiness bring you happiness? Mm -hmm. I, I won't know. It'll be intangible and invisible to me. Depends if you want small success or epic success. <laughs> <laughs> or tree. <laughs> so, so how did you do? Give me an idea. How many of you got five out of five? Okay, very good. So that speaks highly to your idea. How many of you got four? Four. Four is good. Four is good. <laughs> okay. So I think the question is to, to think about it, right? Maybe, maybe some of these are not important to you. This is how I define simplicity. There has to be inner peace. There has to be a higher sense of happiness. There has to be more creativity juices flowing. There has to be this space. Otherwise, um, to me, the simplicity is, you know, comes into question. Is this really going to simplify my life? But if you feel you define simplicity altogether differently, then perhaps think about other questions that we put your idea to the test. All right, so moving forward, the next thing is taking action, okay? If you don't do anything differently after this talk, then I don't think I've done a good job, right? You wanna go home and take one simple action. So think about the simplest, smallest action you can take to make your idea more than an idea. And what would that look like? It could be, in the case of the table, donate it to a friend, or take it to goodwill, uh, or whatever the case may be. Or in the case of your relationship, it could be thinking about an approach that would help create a healthy distance or boundary. And um, it's really, really important to have at least one action in mind. Because in theory, you, you may have simplicity, but, but you have to take action to create it. So write down your idea. I'm sorry, write down the action with your idea. And then we are going to, so we're going to talk about habits here. Uh, I talked earlier about how I had recognized that my job wasn't making, well, it was my, my body habits. They were making me happier, but they were habits. So I couldn't just shift overnight. So we create habits and rituals in our lives, and I have different ways of defining them. And simplicity can, can, can happen in different areas of your life. The first one is accumulation habits, which is the physical stuff you accumulate. A lot of us talked about this when we shared our stories, uh, the space, your living spaces, uh, transportation, you know, uh, your closets, um, your furniture. So that's the physical stuff you accumulate. Uh, and um, that would be, I just called it, our accumulation habits. Yes. Oh, thank you. Timer. Okay. The second one is work habits. So this is how you approach your work. Now this could be the physical office, cubicle, or your home office. So how you organize that space. And then there is your digital life. How do you organize your inbox? How do you, how do you uh, manage your productivity, right? What does your computer look like? Do you have 30 apps for productivity? Do you have four calendars to manage your life? Is that really simple, right? So that's a different level of simplicity. And, and I want you to be thinking about your idea as we go through this, right? Because these are different areas that your idea could be impacting. So there is your work habits, how you approach your work. Then there is your Zen habits, I hope Leo doesn't mind me borrowing that. <laughs> um, and that is, I think that's one of the most important ones for me because it had been missing for so long in my life. And that is how we promote that inner peace, right? I call it rest and recuperate because most of us have such busy lives that we need some Zen to actually recuperate from the day. Uh, but that can be meditation, affirmations. Uh, it can be healthier eating. It could be a, a, a music in your life, whatever it is that can create some zen. And perhaps your idea was to, to have more music or to have more meditation, whatever your idea may be. So that could potentially increase and impact your zen habits. If you don't have any zen habits, perhaps your idea would be how do you start your first zen habit? 
How do you integrate some Zen into your life? And then relationships. And by the way, as a great resource, I know that Mark and Angel have excellent, excellent articles on relationships. So if you want more inspiration on relationships, managing relationships in general, um, that's a great website. Um, and so perhaps your idea of fixing relationships. And I talk about this one a lot so you can tell how to do some cleanup there. And that can be anything. It can be the people, you know, because we, depending on how you live, you naturally come into contact with different communities of people. And sometimes that's not intentional. For instance, my coworkers at my corporate job were not really the best people for me. They, they were very, very different. They had very different values. But because of my habits, I ended up hanging out with them. And I didn't have clear boundaries. So sometimes you naturally are put in situations and environments where you're interacting with people and they may not be serving you in any way, and you may not be serving them. So it's, it's sort of just situational. And I think it's, it's important to be awake and to maybe examine that. If you feel your relationships are not serving you, to just take a look around and see who are you hanging out with. Are the people that you surround yourself with, as Oprah said, lifting you higher? Are they? So that's another area, your um, idea of the impact. And then your food habits, which is self-explanatory, right? How you feed and nourish your body. And that can be another area that you may choose to start your simplicity journey. So those are how I quickly put some categories in place for us. And now I would like you to think about your idea for simplicity and ask yourself, which of your habits do you feel will get most affected with this idea that you have in mind? Who would like to share? Yes. I don't mind. Um, <clears throat> I talked about, uh, mine's a pretty basic goal, probably most of us can do this, except, well, maybe not. I'm not going to do this, so <laughs> you guys are probably already there. Uh, trimming down my closet. The amount of clothes I have. I don't have an outlandish amount, but I really only wear like maybe 20 outfits and I probably have 40. Um, so it'd be really not a hard goal for me to hit. It'd be, it'd be a small goal uh, for me to hit. Uh, so I talked about that and I talked about uh, an easy way to do that just to go through and grab what I'm really not wearing, be honest about it, and then donate it. Wonderful. Wonderful. And that would be your accumulation habits. Accumulation habits. Excellent. Excellent. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, for me, it was uh, one of the things that creates the most mess in my life is transporting stuff back and forth between work and home uh, that is not the same every day. So if I have a certain amount of gear that I transport with me everywhere, but when it changes, stuff gets flustered, and all of a sudden I don't have something that carries this in this way, and then it comes home and it's on the kitchen table and it's all over the place. So finding uh, better ways to transport odds and ends in weird ways. Okay. Uh, without part. Okay. That would be your work habit. It's my work habit and my carry habit. Right. Very good. Very good. One more. Yes. Sarah. Um, because I run a daycare out of my house, I need to advertise so that people know that my business exists. And I'd be paying a subscription for um, a site that advertises daycares and nanny positions. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to want to max out the size of my daycare because I thought that was the most successful thing to do. And I noticed over time that I wasn't providing the kind of care that I wanted to provide to the individual kids. So now that I've gotten to a level that I feel is sustainable and efficient, I mean, every single email I get, I say the same thing. Thank you for contacting me. I'm sorry I'm not accepting. And I just didn't want to cancel that subscription to that advertisement site because I was afraid that it's a bad idea to do this, but it's really annoying to keep answering those emails, so I think it's a good idea to finally cancel that. Right. Some financial simplification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be a good habit of that. Excellent. Excellent. Well, is this useful? Are you are you with me? Your ideas coming along? Excellent. Okay. So here are some other ways that um, that you can uh, integrate simplicity more effectively into your life. Uh, um, Simon Sinek, you all know, he started the, um, the mantra about knowing your why, and I think that's extremely powerful when you really think about it. Why are you doing this? 
Your why is very different from your neighbor's why. Why is this important to you? Maybe you have, you know, have, have some changes in your life and, and you need to simplify. Maybe you are moving. Maybe you are ready for a new change. Whatever your personal reason is, it's important to spend a couple of minutes and articulate that for yourself to know why this is important to you. Because if you don't do that, uh, you may not be committed long term to create this life of simplicity. You will be tempted to give up. So it's important to be very grounded in your reasons. And for me, it has been to create that, uh, that peace and a mental space to pursue my goals. So like I said, and I'm not ashamed to admit, I love my stuff. I live in a 2,400 square foot house. I have a yoga studio that is this big. I'm not giving that up. We're not moving to a smaller home. But I mean, I am not filling the space with furniture because the space is important to me. I am, I, you know, I want to have the mental peace. I want to have the time to myself. So those are my reasons. But for you, it may be that it has to be a small house because I don't want to clean that bigger house or I don't want to drive ever again, so I am going to live in a place where transportation is provided. So it's really important. We may want to take a couple of minutes to do this. I didn't incorporate time for this, but I think how are we doing on time? We have, we have time. So if you want to take a couple of minutes to write in one sentence, there is a thinking. Why is it important for you to have simplicity in your life? What is your number one reason? Who would like to share? It's personal, but we are all friends here. Um, Joe. I'm not. I'm not shy, as everybody knows. I'll share. Okay. Uh, my why behind simplicity is so I know what enough feels like in all areas of my life. And your enough is different from other people's. Right? What enough feels like? Wonderful. Who else? You're the same. Thing. Um, waste is expensive. Waste is expensive. And so all the stuff we have is just wasteful energy that we spend on cleaning stuff and moving stuff and thinking about stuff. It's really expensive. Yeah. So that's your biggest motivator. Love it. Excellent. Very creative. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, because I hope that it's going to give me the space that I crave to find my path and. Yeah. Yes. I feel as though it gives me peace of mind. Yeah. The more stuff, the more stress, the more you've got to clean it, and <laughs> the accumulation, I think, just is a domino, a snowball effect. Yeah. Gives you more time. Mm -hmm. More time. Yes. Our limited resource time. Wonderful. Well, just take the time to do this, either now or later. I think this one is a worthwhile exercise. The second one. Setting boundaries. So depending on where you are in the journey, you may already know, you may have to set some boundaries with yourself, such as you know, if you're going to integrate simplicity and your schedule is really limited, you may have to get up earlier to, to, do, to, to integrate your idea or to, to add the space. Um, or you may have to say no to certain commitments, certain things you've said yes to. Or you may have to draw the line and not answer the phone when your mom calls every night wanting to know how you've been. <laughs> you have to draw the back. <laughs> what was that? Something said for me. Well, anyway. But, but this is important. And it's important to draw the boundaries gently but firmly. Because it's hard for others to understand. They may not understand why you're doing this, why you're going through this. Maybe something's wrong with you. Why are you getting rid of your stuff? Right? Because you are, again, going against the natural flow of society. So setting some healthy boundaries. And I like to keep an ongoing no list. So I'm not going to do this, right? Uh, for a while, I was getting invited to all kinds of showers. Uh, my friends were celebrating. You know, and I like to enjoy that. But it was taking so much time that for a month, I said, no. I'm just going to be unavailable because I was working on a project that was important to me. So knowing the things that are important to you and what are the things that, as a result, you will have to say no to. And some of us have a very hard time with this. So knowing that about yourself and knowing that it's okay, but uh, making it a challenge. How can you say no to something? Because if it's not a hell yes, 
then maybe it should be a no. I don't want to get credit for that. Somebody said that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes. But um, that's, a, that's a good measure of indication, right? You want to be excited about your choices. Okay. The next one, giving support. And you may not be able to rally an entire neighborhood to get on the Simple City bandwagon, but you can get one person. One person. Because doing it alone is not necessary. Somebody in your life cares enough about you to say, I may not understand you're doing this, Ali, or Liz, but I support you. You can come talk to me when it gets difficult. You can come tell me you don't feel like doing this, and I promise to encourage you. And that's a little different from understanding, right? They don't have to understand your choice and do it for themselves, but they can support you. And this, this becomes very important in any big decision you make in your life. And sometimes that's your life partner, which is lucky, but sometimes it's not. It could be your neighbor, it could be your teacher, it could be your mentor, it could be your coach. So having one person to support you, it could be someone in this room, it could be Joel. He could be our supporter. <laughs> you are not alone. You are not alone doing this. All right. Defining your priorities. So as you integrate simplicity, your priorities will shift. If your priority was to go shopping on Saturday, if your priority was to go out every Friday, and now you want to write a book, or you want to sell your car, or you want to clean out your closet, your priorities will change. How you manage your time and your energy will change. It will have to for you to integrate these decisions into your life, these decisions into your lives. And so understanding those priorities and really saying it to yourself, my priority, my priority, I used to go dancing. These shoes are my retired Argentine tango shoes. Oh. <laughs> and, and I used to be pretty good at it, and I loved it. But the Argentine tango events start at 10 p.m., and they go till about 2 a.m. It didn't exactly go with the rest of my life. And so that was a big decision, but I had to say no. And, and, I, and I had my fun, and, and I moved on, and I replaced it what I needed with something else, and now I, I have another fulfillment. But I changed my priorities, and my friends didn't understand it. I got new friends, so <laughs> it works out. But <laughs> it's important to know your priorities, because that links directly to your happiness. And I, and I may be guessing, but we all want that sense of happiness. We're all here because we want to understand what else can make us happy? How can we have a bigger source of happiness by the choices that we make? And there are no right or wrong priorities. If it's important to you, that is enough. Get over it. I have to get over it. <laughs> the fear of missing out, it is false. As you move toward this direction of less, you may feel like you're missing out. You're missing out, your friends are out, or there is, people are doing other things, and they are living with more, and they're buying more, and you are choosing to go with less. And so that's, a, that's an emotional anxiety. I say it's false. It's just an emotion. And I encourage you to inquire. If you feel you, and, and it's an interesting um, emotion. It doesn't just come up so clearly. It may make you anxious. It may make you a little depressed. It may make you feel lonely or left out. And that may be because you feel like you're missing out on something bigger and better. If you are making the decisions towards simplicity, based on your core values, on what's important to you, on what makes you happy, on what is a priority to you, then Charlie said something similar to this. We are most likely moving in the right direction. You may have uncertainty. You probably will. But that's OK. And so the fear of missing out is just a distraction. And your goals are out there. And simplicity, if it's right for you, it's getting you closer. So this is a distraction you want to manage. And um, I'm not being as harsh. Get over it. It's just an expression. But um, be aware of it. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Because it will come up. And um, it's, a, it's not a worthy distraction because um, your journey to simplicity is, is very much worth it. 
So those are some, some strategies that may help you. All right, so now we are thinking on a bigger scale, taking action, leaving here, and I would like you to make a commitment to yourself. A commitment, a promise that says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Your idea may have been as simple as moving that, selling that, that chair or the table on the side or getting rid of the relationship. But on a bigger scale, what commitment are you making? Maybe you promise yourself to have only healthy, holistic relationships in your life. And that may take some time. But that is the decision, that is the commitment you make to yourself because you're worthy of healthy, happy relationships. You are not going to settle for less. Or maybe your commitment to yourself is to live in a clutter-free house. And that will take some time. You can't do all of it at once, but that is the commitment you make to yourself. And um, it's good to have that one person that's going to support you, hold you accountable on this one. So Joel, you're going to hold us all accountable. <laughs> <laughs> so write that down. And if you would like to share, I would like to hear it. For those of you who haven't said a word, would you like to share your idea, your commitment? Yes. I was talking about emptying my closet out. And yes. Again, mine's pretty easy. I'm going to go home tonight and fill up a laundry basket of stuff that I don't really wear. And then I'm not going to go put new stuff back in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming here tomorrow? I am. Okay, I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 And I think if you start with that first step, with that first action, have the support in place, and know this is important to you, uh, you, will, um, you will start to create some momentum and um, see some results. That may be all I have for you. Um, I believe the mental space is, is the best, is the most, most rewarding part of simplicity. And so I am big into positive affirmations because I've had a hard time managing my negative beliefs. So I have a free gift for you to download. It's 12 minutes of an audio recording uh, to simplify your mornings. Uh, if you wake up with any kind of morning anxiety, like I used to, this is a 12 minute audio track that you can go download. So we have 10 minutes, uh, and that is all I have for you. I would love to hear your answers to the questions but then a post or anything you wish to share, we have some time, so you can raise your hand and share with us. Yes? Something that I've been thinking about is the simplicity is not simple, it's not easy. And, and I totally agree with you. It's like, um, and I think part of the reason is one, there's not a lot of role models, which I think is great that so many people share mm -hmm. their experiences because you really need role models to know how to. Yeah. How to be simple because we learn how not to be simple. But I, you know, I'm only four years in or whatever. Uh, but it it gets easier. It does get easier. Like for me, I was willing to do this really hard learning curve, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that when I figured out how to live with less, yeah. it would be easier to clean my house. It would be easier to decide what to wear in the morning. It would be, you know, yeah. yeah so. Right, because you change your habits and mm -hmm. it becomes more natural and it becomes your state of existence. Right, so thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. I have a question based on this slide. Yes. Would you be willing to share like what the first hour of your morning looks like? Oh, my, my first hour? Yeah. Well, it depends. If I'm not traveling, I generally wake up and, and I have a, um, a yoga practice. So um, I, you know, I, I don't do it first thing in the morning. So I have, you know, maybe uh, an hour or so. I do some writing. Um, I do check email. I haven't shed that habit. So. Um, but um, I do some work, and then I have a couple of hours of yoga, meditation, and then um, I make some juice, some green juice or smoothies. Um, spend some time with my husband, asking what he's up to. He never has a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind me. Uh, but um, I used to have those more strict routines in the morning, and I found that I actually don't do well with a very rigid 
uh, the regimen. But um, that's just me, you know. But during my, so I have more flexibility. So I have certain things I want to do during the day, and it may not all get done in the first hour of the morning, but I work it in so I am flexible. You know, sometimes my yoga schedule, you know, gets pushed in the afternoon, but I know that I want to do it before evening, right? Or I, I do a, a writing exercise every single day. And I make sure if it doesn't get done in the morning, it has to get done sometime during the day. And, uh, and I feel actually the writing is very uh, complementary to this process, right? Having a writing habit, whether you are a writer or not, it's important to have that because it helps you with delving into your subconscious as you go through this and understanding yourself better, which helps you in the direction. So, thank you. Comments? Thoughts? Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you took something away, and uh, I wish you the best with your commitments. <laughs>